Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing loves. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was laughing so much throughout this episode. I know there were a lot of big things and I really shouldn't be laughing, but this season is so good. This season is so good. Mm. I'm so entertained and I don't even root for anybody, but I'm so entertained. Wow, we're reviewing episode eight and only episode eight. Some of you people were spoiling in the comments in the last video. Luckily for you, I didn't know what y'all were talking about, so it's fine. But relax, episode eight only. Thank you. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. The episode starts with the apartment, the what? The apartment viewing, I don't know, okay? Chelsea and Jimmy are first and they show each other. Guys, it's too late for this, okay? My brain is not braining right now. Isn't he cute? I like it, it's really only. Go look at my room. Hello? Are you, are you moving in? <laughs> are you gonna be the third best friend out here? Tell me your <laughs> <laughs> I could not live here. <laughs> not a chance. Baby, you said it was small. This is huge. I mean. I am shocked. <laughs> Jimmy really did make this apartment seem like it was way smaller than it is, but I feel like he doesn't want, he doesn't want Chelsea to move in. Both places to me were nice, but I liked Jimmy's place better, even though it was a studio apartment. It looked nicer. Yeah, she had a lot of tchotchkes and I'm not really a tchotchke bird. I'm lying. I'm actually, a, I'm, I'm actually very much so a tchotchke person, but I just didn't like her tchotchkes, you know? But um, he would not want to stay at her place because she has an annoying ass roommate. I'm thinking to myself, they're same, same. They match each other's energy. If you find the roommate annoying, how are you going to live with Chelsea? Maybe that's foreshadowing. We'll see. Next is Clay. Clay's house is nicer than I expected. I don't know what I was thinking I was gonna see, but it, his house was nice. Oh my gosh, is this your? It's my vision board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What you think? Comfortable. Comfortable. Cozy, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll put it on your side for sure. I'm impressed. I'll take the L. Look at you. See, oh. Look at me, man. Yeah, I still feel like I could beat you in a race. Mm. Yeah. I love your style. It's like a vintage store in here. Yeah, yeah. So what you think? I definitely see myself raising a family here and having kids and cooking breakfast. It's nice to see that he's a homeowner. Okay, period. Love that for you. I, I don't know if this is anything to read into, but he kept saying, I need a woman's touch. He said to AD, you can splash a little bit of yourself in here. It makes me think that he doesn't actually plan on letting her do a lot of stuff in his home. It's like the way that it is is the way that it is and don't do too much to it. But it could just be him saying the, the, phrase, the phrases that people say, a woman's touch, you know? We'll let it slide. Laura never fails to find an issue, never fail. Even when she's complimenting Jeremy's place, it's not really a compliment. <laughs> of course you have a whole ass. I mean, why not? It's like down to my shoulders. It is really long. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't want me to grow it back out? I mean, I can pull I'm going to hold back my comment. This is really cute silverware. Yeah. Should I be concerned? No. Well, the silverware she might actually have to be concerned about. And I have seen the tea. You guys have sent it to me. I have seen it. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but we are going to do a tea video and a spoiler video. If you want to know what's been going on behind the scenes on social media, we'll have a video about that once I'm caught up with the episodes. I've never met a guy that would pick but out hold, cute But hold silverware. on, like I even keep up with like the matching like kitchen utensils. Why is it all so like Organized? oddly like brought up to the front? It's kind of serial killer a little bit, giving serial killer vibes, but like in a good way. So we're gonna lay down and I gotta just- I love that you like sound like Squidward with it on. The shoes on the bed made me want to cry. Ooh, the shoes on the bed made me want to cry. I know black people have this thing about outside clothes on the bed. I'm not too much of a stickler about that if you're on top of the bed. Don't get in the bed with your outside clothes. Now you're doing too much. But if you're on top of the bed, that's fine. Shoes? You're pushing it. Shoes, 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 shoes is where I draw the line. Get your shoes off the damn bed. Oh, <sighs> so. As they're going through this apartment, Laura is so shocked at how pristine Jeremy's place is, but girl, this is what he told you. 
he told you he's very meticulous. He told you he's OCD. He's, he's a very cleanly man. And she's just so shocked by it. And she can't even just compliment him. She can't say, your place is so nice. I'm so impressed. Look at you. It has to be, you're kind of giving zero killer vibe. Girl, she, uh, anything she must find an issue with. Are you not tired? This is exhausting. Kenneth shows his apartment and this is where my alarm bells just started to ring for this man because why does it look like he just moved in last week? Baby, you need somebody to cook for you. <laughs> is there any? Okay, this Yo. is a little bit. Yo, my spice cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually criminal. I'm sorry. Where's the adobo? Hmm? Where's the old bay? Where's the garlic salt? Where's the onion powder? Sir, where is the any seasoning salt? Anything. Anything. Forget all that. Even the salt. Where is the salt? So, you sing everything. I like it. Yeah. I'm impressed. Thank yeah. you, babe. I kid you not. The way I would have grabbed that phone and just chucked it across the room. Oh, I'm, I'm a, me and this phone are chopping cheese. Okay. Chopping cheese. Not even going to lie to you. But while I'm having a conversation with somebody, I'm not going to be face planted into this phone, especially somebody who I'm still trying to nurture a relationship. Well, 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 hmm. Yeah. If I was actually into somebody, you wouldn't see me fully immersed in my phone and not paying them much mind. So dismissive, Kenneth. Kenneth truly disappointed me this episode. Truly disappointed me. I did not expect this from him at all. And now I'm going back. Oh, this is what Leah meant. Oh, this is what Leah meant. <laughs> I'm just clicking now. Um, when I said Kenneth was being performative, Absolutely he was. Absolutely he was. Oh, he does I felt like Tyra Banks. I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? Brittany feels like Kenneth is down in the dumps a lot of the time and it's very draining to be around that kind of energy. It reminds me for the people who are watching Married at First Sight Australia, Tristan. I feel like Brittany and um, Cassandra are going through the same thing with these men, just draining to be with. And so he's saying, I need grace, I need grace. You know, I'm not always gonna be chipper. Fine, you don't have to be chipper all the time, but you can at least be present. You can at least be in the moment. Oh, I was so, I was so disappointed by Kenneth. And here I was, oh, here I was, judging him at the beginning because of his age, but then he swore up and down, I'm mature, I'm so mature, I'm so mature. And I should have known because every time somebody makes it a point to broadcast something from the rooftops that they are something that, um, they're fighting against something that they've been told that they are and they're saying, no, that's not the case. I'm not that, this is how I am, this is how I am. It typically is an overcompensation. His 25 was 25-ing today. And why did one of y'all, why? <laughs> why did one of y'all DM me this photo? Y'all are so, y'all are so wrong for that. Wow, disappointed in him. Anyways, child. <laughs> I hope you guys know this is for like YouTube. It's not like I'm actually disappointed in the man like I know him. It really is not that deep. It's just, uh, I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Anyways, um, Miss Happy Go Lucky, she, you know, I know that I'm a happy go lucky person for the most part, but even she is exhausting to me. I'm like, does it ever turn off? <laughs> I love that shirt. I'm gonna cry. Don't cry, don't cry. It's so shiny. <laughs> oh my God. It's the panting. It's the pan. <laughs> Girl, if you don't act your age, how old is Chelsea? Hold on. How old is Chelsea from Love is Blind? Um, why are you not showing me how old she is? Why are they showing me uh, Jessica? Don't tell me even when you search Chelsea, Jessica shows up. <laughs> that is too funny. 
that is too funny. Um, she's 32. Let me not, you know what? Good on her for being a happy person. A lot of these people in this life could use some of her joy. All right. So let's get into the conversation with the friends. Chelsea tells her friends that Trevor was her number one and that she loved him, which proves anybody who would have said, will you marry me first would have been her husband. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Again, you are going to make these men make a decision about you knowing you have no plans of doing the same. Nah, not right. Not right at all. Jimmy has a phone issue as well, but it might be worse than a old boy because apparently he's always on his phone and he had seen a picture of Jessica. And since he saw the picture, his tone has changed. He hasn't been as affectionate anymore. Chelsea thinks that he's now having regrets about his choice. Interesting. So um, she says that he's been disconnected, but when he joins the group, she says that he's the best communicator ever. He always speaks his feelings. He always speaks his mind. He hasn't kissed me once today. Um, what? Mm -hmm. What? what we've, had one, we've had one argument. Mm -hmm. One. One. I will say sorry 100% of the time. If you can understand where I'm at. He communicates so stinking well. I'm like, mm -hmm. does Chelsea, is Chelsea a people pleaser? Yeah. Is Chelsea a people pleaser? Because in the pause, it's like she didn't want to say anything because she didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Now on the outside, she doesn't want to actually be honest with Jimmy about where things stand. She's here boosting him up. But girl, you're just, you're just people pleasing because you know he's not that great of a communicator because you're about to complain about it as soon as your friends leave. Hmm, interesting, interesting. He tells the friends that he was down about the breakup. However, Chelsea really picked him up. And you know, despite, sh dis ooh, despite her insecurities, she is his type, allegedly. And she is perfect. Mm. Okay. All right. Moving on. Johnny learns that Crystal, not Crystal. Johnny learns that Amy is a Crystal girl and he learns a few other things too. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> what? Throw the flag. I love my crystals. There's no shame about it and you're gonna like it too. Do you want to live like freely as possible, put as much money away, like cutting back on certain things? Like I could definitely get to that <laughs> i'm more about like living in the present enjoying what you have like you know living it up while you can the next big jump for for us really right now would be like to buy a house yeah 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 but not to like support a child too yeah it would be a lot mm -hmm. but like we still would have a home and like yeah. we would i don't want that period y'all why did i think all this time they were having sex how did i how do, okay so when she said hold on when she kept saying our physical connection is what I thought it would be, is it just them being in each other's presence? I I thought I thought that was implying sex, but it wasn't. They're not they're not doing the nasty. Interesting. So, anyways, excuse me. Um, it is no wonder why these two feel like things are too good to be true. They haven't talked about a lot of things, or if they have talked about it, it's just been on the surface. They have not dug deep. One, he's not even into the crystal girlies. Two, they have different financial plans for their life. So she is a instant gratification while he's a delayed gratification. He's more about saving, wanting to retire young and all that stuff. She's about living in the moment, exploring, doing all those things because life is short and it is, but um, life is also long. And you want to make sure that you have the funds to survive, okay? They also have a difference of opinion on what would happen if they had a baby early. He is not here for an oops baby whatsoever. And she says that she wants to wait five years to have a child, but her expression, her face is not reflecting that. Not at all. Not at all. So I understand her hesitation on the whole not wanting to take birth control. I do get it, but they're going to have to come to some agreement about their family planning. If you're not going to take birth control or the patch or have an IUD, he's either always going to have to wrap it up or get that snippety snip snip. He's going to have to do something. 
y'all are going to have to do something. So they say that they're not going to get married until they come to a decision about birth control. I think that's a good idea. Apparently, I've never heard this before. Birth control would actually work in her favor because of different health issues that she had. I think she said she's anemic. Did she say PCOS? I might be stretching with that one. But she said she had some sort of ailments and her physician already told her that birth control actually would be good for her. But her own concerns are keeping her from wanting to do that. Honestly, I totally understand. The adverse effects of birth control, like I said in the last video, I've heard the stories. Not pleasant for a lot of people. So yeah, y'all gotta come to some agreement. Wrap it up, sir. Yeah, because imagine if they have an oops baby and then they resent each other because she's okay with raising an oops baby. He's not okay with it. It's going to cause tension. Whew, iron that one out, y'all. So Brittany has a bone to pick with Kenneth. <laughs> wow. And um, this man is living as if he is a single man. Let's talk about you waking me up last night. <laughs> Let, let's speak on that. I did wake you up. Correct. When um, I had to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning. You did. Went to get my hair twisted. I wanted to go see my mentor. And I called you between each transition. I just don't want one day of me getting home late. It's not. There are times where I am trying to be affectionate to you. And you may feel like you don't want it at the moment. We're going to sit here for a little bit with Brittany and Kenneth. Okay. So um, let me find out. Kenneth is a Jared 2.0. Let me find out this man came back in the middle of the night knowing his fiance has to be up early in the morning presumably for work he wakes her up apparently he wants to get you know get physical not sex but get physical and i don't even know what they mean by that because according to britney they haven't even made out they haven't even made out what do y'all do she's obviously not in the mood He's now taking this out on her saying, oh, whenever I'm in the mood, you don't want to be physical with me, but you have to give me grace because sometimes I'm not going to be in the mood for when you want to be physical. It's late in the night. You know she has to be up early. This is what you're using? This is what you're using. Oh my gosh, the 25 was 25 in you guys. It truly was 25 in. So this man keeps saying, you have to give me grace. You have to give me grace. Grace for what? Truly grace for what? She's very frustrated because she's like, I know that we agreed to not have sex, but I would at least want the temptation to be there. And I feel like you don't crave me. Ooh. You don't crave me. The way that would have broke my heart, truly it would have broke my heart. And so he's gonna say, well, you're talking about you. You're referring to yourself because I feel like what did he say? I feel like I crave you or you crave me, something like that. He's basically saying, you're calling me a subpar husband, but I'm not calling you a subpar wife, so that's not fair to me. You need to give me grace because sometimes I'm just not gonna be in the mood. Same way you weren't in the mood last night. Again, she was sleeping, he woke her up. He came in the middle of the night. Apparently he went to meet up with a mentor or something. And then this man was talking about he was getting his hair twisted in the middle of the night. So he wasn't at a salon, we can tell you, we, we, we can confirm that. Where were you at? Who are you always texting in your phone? Hmm. Doesn't he have a homegirl that he's really close to? Were you at her house? Was she twisting your hair? You see, I'm an overthinker. I'm thinking about all these things. Who was twisting your hair? Who was up in your head? Hmm. Who was it? Why are you coming in late in the night? She starts to cry. This man pays her no mind. He's on his phone while she's bawling. And what I'm hearing from you in this moment is the caliber of a man that you are is what I need, but I don't feel X, Y, and Z for you. That's not enough for us to be like, well, we'll work it out. No, that's not enough. I know I keep interjecting, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just realizing a, a few different things. One, his communication is great. I will not take that away from him. But even with such good communication, his empathy, non-existent. Maybe non-existent is, is, is pushing it, but his empathy for Britney specifically in this moment was piss poor. And on top of that, he's now saying, because you don't see me as the kind of person who you would want to be with, this is not something we can work through. And I guess we should just end things. How did he manage to flip it on her? How did he do that? How did, and look at his face. 
He don't even care. He just flipped that thing. Oh, he put it down, flipped it, and reversed it, y'all. He put it down, flipped it, and reversed it. Spiritually, what it's supposed to be for me will be. Yeah. If it's not there for you and I, he's going to prepare me for that, prepare you for that, and us for that. I know God is out here looking at himself like, now why am I in this? Why? <laughs> How did I get into this situation? But I do want you to find the person you're actually supposed to be with. Even though it's not me and I thought it was. <laughs> right? Okay. I had to rewind this a few times because I was like, there's no way this was a breakup. He was so cold and distant, I was thinking there's no way this was a break. He did not just break up with her. What? And then the song, you know, Netflix does those um, true to life songs what did the song say this is the end of the road there's nothing left to say i was like damn that was the breakup the man said didn't he say i'm not the man for you and i hope you find the one or something just cold just like that just like that so i was just on discord maybe like an hour ago talking to some people and they think that he is envious of the black love that AD and Clay have. And then someone in the comments of the last video was saying if he was going to be this stuck on race, he should have never come on a show where it wasn't gonna be a guarantee that he would marry a black woman. And I agree, I agree. If this was going to be such a pivotal thing for you, you should have never come on a show where it was possible that you would be with somebody outside of your weight, race, white or otherwise. Why would you even do that? What? Now this girl's out here falling for you, talking about love you. She's concerned about, you know, how am I going to meld into your family and stuff like that? And you have no plans of being with her at all. Somebody else in the comments said you saw the attraction depreciate from the time that they met each other. I missed it. I did. But... Yeah, now I believe it. Now I believe it. And again, something about that first night felt performative to me and now it's making sense. Kenneth. Didn't I call him my little brother? No, he's out of the family. He's out. He's out. We need somebody else. So Chelsea, who's been raving about Jimmy being such a great communicator, now has all these complaints about how distant and disconnected he is from her. Today I was worried about you, babe. You had me really worried. And you kept saying, oh, my, my lip hurts really bad. My lip does hurt really bad. I want you to be like, hey, babe, how are your eyebrows? <laughs> like, yeah. And I didn't really get that from you, so. Coming up to me and like grabbing my face and kissing me, telling me I'm pretty, you're like, you didn't kiss me one time today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll work on kissing you a little bit more. No, babe, that's not it. <sighs> I just like, uh, I hear everything that she's saying. And as a clingy girl too, <laughs> she hasn't been called clingy yet. That's going to be a separate, a separate little section that we're going to talk about. As a clingy girl too, I feel everything that she's saying, but because she is whiny, I can't side with her. I really cannot. So she has an issue with the fact that he hasn't told her he loved her enough times today. He hasn't kissed her enough times today. He hasn't touched her enough times today. Um, his excuse is piss poor. Piss poor. He's like, oh, I woke up early today. I had work all day. I'm so busy. And then it was, I bit my lips so hard. I can barely even talk right now. It's just so hard for me to talk right now. I bit my lip. Chelsea, I bit it. Okay, apparently um, he saw Jessica's picture earlier that day. And so Chelsea is thinking he saw the picture. He has regrets. Now he's pulling away from me. Um, could very well be true. The fact that he even referred to her as a Kardashian and he refuses to believe that Miss Girl looks like Miss Fox. Um, I could see that. Realistically. This man has been emotionally constipated from the pods. And I don't know why these women don't want to ask questions. I don't know why these men, I don't know why people in general don't want to ask more questions when they feel like something is off from the pods. This desperation to want to get married 
is leading them into situations like this that could have been easily avoided if they had asked the questions in the pods. The man struggled to express himself then until his back was against the wall and he had to propose to somebody. Then he all of a sudden had the words. Even in this conversation, he has nothing to say until his back is against the wall and then he just lets it out. Okay, fine, you're clingy, right? He hasn't ever been able to express himself. And you had the opportunity to kind of put his feet to the fire when your friends were around. Would it have been drawing him out in public? Yeah. Would it have been distasteful? Yeah. But at least you probably would have gotten an honest answer from him because whenever he feels the pressure, then he speaks. Maybe that's what you have to do. Pull a Britney. Pull his feet to the fire. Because would we have gotten that response from Kenneth if Britney did not keep pressing the issue? Probably not. So this girl is now shocked. Like, why is he retreating from me? When has he ever been full on with you? She says, I'm trying to get a glimpse from you, but I can't see it. He has been showing you who he is this entire time. You refuse to see it. You refuse to see it. Girl, the signs have been there. And you just keep turning a blind eye. So like I said, he was saying, oh, I, I've been busy. Oh, it's my lip. And finally he got to his wit's end and he said, okay, you're clingy. And on top of that, you want too much sex. I'm not gonna be able to tell you I love you every single hour of the day just because I'm working from home. Truthfully, you've been a little clingy. Clingy? Clingy? I felt like- Are you fucking kidding me? You mean you're calling me clingy? I have given. I know you have given. No, I don't, I don't wanna hear from you. For you to say I'm clingy when I'm trying to do things for you to prove to you like- I'm hey, telling you how I feel. I love you. I'm telling you how I feel. You didn't kiss me once today. I did. You never tell me you I love me. You twice. Okay. You started causing these problems and digging for shit the second you saw Jess's picture. I cooked I'm, you dinner. I'm I stayed thankful by you myself. Cooked me dinner. I'm then thankful. Then I sat and watched your fucking show with you. You're the one that wanted to have sex. Yeah, I also did. Also, maybe wanted a little breather from that too. There it is, Jimmy. So there it is. Come on, you better speak your mind. <laughs> you better speak your mind. Now, of course, there are men who are lower desire than their women. It happens. But if my man looked me in the eye and said, you want too much sex for me, we need to cool off. You hate me. You hate me. Why don't you, why don't you want to take me down? Huh? You hate me. What? In the honeymoon phase, he's already like, it's too much. It's too much. You're overdoing it. The kissing and the, the saying I love you and all that stuff, I get it. But rarely do you see a man be like, you desire me too much. Chill out. The way I would die. So she then had the audacity to say that he's the one looking for issues. I said, he is? What show am I watching? I must be watching so I she's on a different show than than what I'm watching because you have been looking for issues at every moment of this engagement. You have looked for issues. And every time you look for them, you find them because you're creating them. You are the issue. Okay? My brother loves to quote this thing from Shrek. Apparently somebody in the movie was asking to have their problems removed and then they disappeared. That is what would happen to Chelsea. That, that is absolutely what would happen to Chelsea. Chelsea would disappear the moment she asked for her problems to disappear. She is insufferable, okay? That's it. He said she's clingy. She really took offense to that. Um, you are, you are. And the huffing and the puffing and the panting, girl, it's it's childish, it's weird. I mean, sure, if that's your quirk, that's fine, but I don't know. I feel like she's doing too much. The episode ends with um, Miss Jessica. Jessica meets up with Laura. Apparently there's some social media, something, something that's been going down with uh, Jimmy. She was like, so are we getting married? Or, and she was like, he fell in love with someone else and it wasn't you? Is he well? He sends me a friend request and I see it come through immediately and I'm like, so I'm like, ooh, he must be thinking about me. You're not repulsed by it? No. Okay. I have dreams often about like conversations we had and like plans we made. Jimmy's a man and like we knew without seeing each other that the attraction was there. It's gonna be like dangling temptation like right in front of his face. It's the truth and you know it is. So we, b before we even get into Jimmy, let's talk about Jeremy. Sarah Ann sent Jeremy a message saying, hey, if you're still on the fence, we could talk about it. He didn't say anything to it, but he did uh, double tap that message. He 
he did like it. So he's communicating with her without actually saying anything. Laura, her strict nature, it's really showing because why is she already going through this man's phone? She said she saw it in his phone, took a picture, and then um, is now showing Jessica. Already you distrust this man? Already. Already. There's still 20 days left to the wedding. You already don't trust them? Madness. So, um... She has concerns that he wants to reignite things with Sarah Ann. And even though there wasn't a message from him, she's wondering how Sarah Ann felt so comfortable to send a message like that. He must have given her the idea that the door is still open. Interesting. With Jimmy and Jessica, he sent a friend request. She didn't respond to it. And then hours later, he removed the friend request. His page is open. Her page was not. He then privated his page after, but she already saw what he looked like. She claims she's still into him. She claims she still loves him. And you can't just stop loving somebody based on the connection that they had. I don't, listen, I, I'm not gonna judge. You like who you like. I even look back at some people who I've been interested in and my friends would question me like, girl, did you really like him? I really did. Who I really did. Yeah, she says even if he looked like, you know, um, Lord Farquaad, since we're on the Shrek train, she'd still be with it. All right, sure. Um, Jessica says that she's not over Jimmy and she's po she's positive that he would have a hard time resisting her. So I think she's going to play into this whole you're going to choke thing. She's definitely going to flaunt her beauty. She's going to dangle it around his uh, head. I don't know why you would want to do that. I don't know. What is it about Jimmy, guys? At this point, maybe he really is packy because I'm not getting the hype. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Girl, are you sure? You really want Jimmy. For real? Anyways, I guess we'll see how episode nine goes. Episode eight was so good. Ooh, it was so good. So chaotic. And it brought up so much emotion out of me. I loved it. Where were AD and Clay though? We didn't see enough of them. And I want to see AD's apartment. I felt like it was going to be so cute. Anyways, like, comment, share, subscribe as always. And I'll see you in the next one.